I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nehal Shah from ICICI Securities. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Rao. Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of ICICI Securities, I welcome you all to the conference call of APL Apollo Tubes Limited to discuss the Q1 FI21 results. From the management, we have Mr. Arun Agarwal, the CEO of the company, Mr. Deepak Goel, the CFO, and Mr. Arubhav Gupta, Chief Strategy Officer of the company. I would request Mr. Anubhav Gupta to start the call with his opening remarks, post which we can then proceed with the Q&A session. Over to you, Anubhav. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Nehal. Uh, thank you all for joining in today. Good evening. We are also joined by our chairman, Mr. Sanjay Gupta, over the call. He will be happy to take the questions uh, uh, later on. So uh, to start with uh, the Q1 FA21 performance, it has been quite an eventful um, quarter of our lives. We are glad to share with you that uh, the uh, that we have proven resilience uh, in these difficult times, and we have emerged stronger than ever before out of these uh, difficult times. Now we are future ready for uh, uh, in the coming months as the demand uh, in the Indian economy recovers uh, uh, over the next two to three quarters. To face the crisis, we worked on four point agenda, uh, which helped us to come out of the crisis uh, with with much proven resilience. Number one was the lighter balance sheet, reduction in the debt, reduction in debtors, and reduction in inventory. Number two was the lower fixed costs uh, in the overall organization. Number three was the market share gains and volume ramp up as we had seen the opportunity to gain market share uh, uh, from the weak competitors. And number four is the profitability uh, levels returning back to the pre-COVID levels. So coming to point number one, uh, if you see our uh, quarterly results, we have reduced our debt by 55% where we have reduced our debtors by 75% and our inventory is uh, <clears throat> is also down by around uh, 10%. Uh, this is this was possible because we switched to cash uh, sales model which helped us uh, in faster collections um, and uh, it helped us reduce the overall debt in the system. Number two was the lower fixed cost. We worked across the verticals, uh, be it the uh, be it the employee cost, be it the establishment cost, and of course the interest cost, which was result of the, which was result of the uh, lower debt. Uh, so overall fixed costs are down by 20 to 25 percent uh, in the in the first quarter. Number three was the volume ramp up. So, um, so our plant started uh, operationalizing from 22nd April. Our first plant uh, started in April 2020, uh, 22nd April, and uh, over the next 10 days, all our 10 plants were fully operational. So that really gave us the head start uh, versus our competitors, and uh, we could uh, start gaining the market share. Number two was the our strategy on uh, rural sales. Uh, because of the reverse uh, migration, which had happened in the month of uh, um, um, April and uh, initial May, uh, we believe that the rural sales will outperform the urban sales. So we, fo we highly focus on the rural sales, and uh, we, we triggered our uh, distribution network in the rural areas and uh, we started servicing our distributors aggressively to, to catch uh, the rural sales. Third reason for, uh, for high market share was, of course, the uh, unorganized uh, sectors, uh, which was struggling uh, because of the cash crunch, because of the liquidity, because of the supply chain constraint, whereas uh, our organization was uh, much resilient to face all these difficulties. And uh, number four was, of course, the replacement of structural steel tubes versus conventional uh, construction methodologies where we see big switch uh, to our high efficient uh, products um, uh, which were replaced uh, which were replaced from uh, conventional structurals like uh, steel angle garter channel aluminum profiles the the wooden uh, um, the wooden uh, products etc so so this helped us uh, ramp up our volumes quickly in month of may and june uh, if, if you see, uh, bulk of our sales came in last 15 days of May and uh, full 30 days of June. And, and there was very um, strong growth uh, if you compare June 2020 versus June 2000, 2019. And we are glad to share that the momentum continued um, in the month of July as well. Now the fourth uh, strategy is to, uh, is to work on the profitability. Now we have lighter balance sheet, we have ramped up all the volumes. And uh, now we will uh, work on improving the profitability uh, for our uh, for our products. 
Uh, talking about the Q1 performance, the main highlights were, of course, uh, the balance sheet numbers, uh, where we cut down the debt. We improved our networking capital cycle to 10 days versus 20 days in March. There was a big improvement in uh, in operating cash flow, which was around 5 billion INR. Uh, in whole of FY20, we generated that much of cash flow, which we could generate only in the uh, in the first 90 days of uh, of the financial year. And uh, and in terms of uh, PNL. Um, there was volume decline of 40% YOY, which resulted in EBITDA a decline of 60% uh, uh, YOY. But I think uh, what needs to be highlighted here is the reduction in the interest cost, which was uh, down by 25% to uh, 210 million. Uh, um, and uh, we believe that uh, these uh, cost efficiencies, which we which we uh, which we could work uh, at the establishment cost, at the employee cost, at the, at the other fixed cost, and at the interest cost level. These should uh, be continued over the coming uh, quarters, which will aid our overall uh, uh, EBITDA margins. <clears throat> um, lastly, it is uh, currently difficult to give any guidance uh, for the full year of FY21. We are mon monitoring the situation on a daily, weekly basis. Uh, uh, last, uh, in the last two, three weeks, um, uh, there were multiple lockdowns in, in multiple cities across India. So we are quite watchful of this uh, current situation, and uh, and uh, we are changing our strategies uh, accordingly. So far, uh, it has worked uh, quite well for us, and we are hopeful that uh, uh, and that uh, the momentum which we gathered in month of May and June, we should continue over the uh, coming quarter, uh, ending September 2020. Uh, with this, uh, we would like to open the floor uh, for the Q&A session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask questions, please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Saurabh Patwal from HDFC. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, thanks for taking the question, Bob. Uh, I think it's a very great set of numbers, and plus uh, uh, the commentary which you provided is also very uh, positive. Just wanted to understand one thing: See, this quarter, the proportion of tricot uh, volumes compared to the uh, APL volumes was uh, significantly higher as the fall there was not uh, uh, as uh, as big as the fall in the other uh, products so and since apl since tricot has a significantly higher ebitda margin which is almost 2x currently uh, so as the proportion of uh, tricot decreases or uh, you may say other way around as in the the normal products uh, uh, volume increases do you see uh, some pressure on margin there because if we exclude this quarter, uh, so just we just do uh, A minus B, so that and uh, so the so that gives a EBITDA of the core product of the uh, the key APL products close to 2,500 uh, uh, compared to 2,000 uh, almost 3,000 which we have reported. So just wanted your thoughts on the same. So so sorry, if you see the sales momentum in month of May and uh, June. Right, uh, we could gather uh, very aggressively the Kerala and coastal markets of India. Okay, this was the peak season for uh, this was the peak season for uh, for uh, for galvanized uh, for galvanized products, right? And uh, and uh, and 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 uh, and if you see the signature product of Tricot, right? Uh, it uh, really gathered it really gained momentum last year. So it continued when the when there was lockdown. Uh, coming off, right? There was pent up, good right. pent up demand, and uh, we could aggressively uh, cater to that um, market, uh, and that's why right. the proportion of tripod was higher in the in the Q1. Yeah. And uh, and the same was visible in the in the in the APL Apollo results also, uh, right? So we have a, we have one plant there uh, in Bangalore, so that performance was also equally good compared to like what you saw in tripod. 
So my question was slightly different, Anubhav. See, I'm just I'm just trying to understand the simple fact that x of AP, x of tricot are EBITDA per ton clumps to close to around 2,500, right? But uh, and as proportion so, as volume sort of, increases, sort of, sort of, sort of and just yeah. one thing here, you please yeah. include the other income while calculating the um, EBITDA per ton. But that's right. not operating, right? No, it is operating because it's all the uh, it's all the export incentives which we receive, right? So it is part of the operational income. Uh, you please include that. So if you include that, our EBITDA per ton was around three thousand uh, um, uh, for for the Q1, excluding tricot. And including tricot, how much it would be then? Thirty-two hundred. Okay, so you think that so, the impact will be lower in that case. Yeah, yeah. And so, how much? You, so, what would be the breakup of other income in terms of uh, 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 how much of it? Uh, so, ninety percent of ninety percent of, of other income is, is yes, is export, export incentives. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I'll join you for the question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraj Mehta from Equus PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir, and congratulations for great set of numbers. Just the only question I had, sir, was on the market share. <coughs> uh, considering the volume growth that we have seen in May and June, and and the growth that you are also seeing in July, uh, what will be in your view? I mean, before the lockdown, you were saying that our market share is around forty percent. So, a if you can tell us what is the run rate of the market as of today, and what will be your share roughly in that? So, so how we how we see is uh, Viraj. For example, bef uh, after before COVID, say market was worth hundred dollars, right? Our market share was forty uh, percent, so we were at forty dollars. Now after COVID, today market is operating at eighty dollars, but our market share has uh, become more than fifty percent. So we have already crossed uh, forty dollars because of increase in the market share. So industry is down by twenty twenty five percent. But that got compensated because of our improvement in the market share. So today we are operating at fifty percent. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pallav Agarwal from Antique Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening and uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, so you know, I had a couple of questions. Uh, first was you know on the steel prices. You know there have been you know, uh, reports that they've increased by almost two and a half to three thousand rupees per ton. So will this uh, help in any way? You know in uh, in supporting our spreads in the next quarter. So Pallav, uh, if you look at the steel price trend uh, after the lockdown was op uh, was lifted, there was a decline. In the steel prices, so in last one or two months, what you have been hearing is that steel prices have uh, come back to the pre-COVID levels, right? So industry is now adjusting to uh, to the pre-COVID levels, and uh, and of course, uh, I mean, uh, see if you look at our business model, uh, if uh, steel prices go up or down, our volume, if you see last 10 years, last five years, last three years, last year also, we have always grown at 20%. In all these years, uh, steel cycle, uh, there would have been different cycles, up cycle, down cycle. So I think uh, it might impact one or two months uh, plus or minus. But if you look at the broad bid, uh, broad bid basis, two quarters, three quarters, it gets uh, quite normalized. So, so our, so there is no change in our strategy uh, for the for the uh, for the sales. Uh, if steel prices crash by 10% or they go up by 10%. Okay, and you, know, you I mean it's very impressive on the working capital reduction that you have achieved. But once you know norm, you know sales volume start increasing and normalizing, would this working capital level uh, you know go up? Or partly also because yes, one steel prices have gone up, so the raw material you know inventory absolute value would go up. And if the okay. activity levels improve, can you all just manage with cash sales, or you would have to extend some credit period going ahead? So, Pallav, July was uh, quite a healthy month for us. Okay, um, uh, if you compare it versus June, or it compare it versus uh, last year July, right? And our uh, net working capital cycle uh, remains similar. What you see it in uh, 30th June balance sheet. Okay, 
so so given that we don't have any cap major capex this year so this level net debt level of about uh, 350 crores or thereabouts is it sustainable like can we end the year uh, fy21 at these levels so um, um so uh, we 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 think that uh, it should it should uh, come uh, um, much lower than what you see on 30th june every quarter you will see a uh, decline in debt because of the improvement in working capital and of course see if first uh, first quarter you see our ebitda was only 70 crores right versus we were doing 150 crore of ebitda before uh, pre covid level so so if when we return to those levels there will be a lot of cash flow generation in the system from uh, Uh, from profits so that is yet to play out okay fair uh, so so just lastly you know if you could just give us what are the current you know uh, hrc levels you know what what levels are you so um, uh, see i mean uh, we won't like to share this sensitive information but uh, but uh, uh, before covid uh, the hrc prices were around 39000 uh, 38 39000 per ton and uh, they have reached uh, two similar levels Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for answering all. Thanks, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankit Merchant from Reliance Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. My question is related to the cash sales uh, uh, component. So w- what we have seen on the ground is that few of the dealers are quite happy with the, uh, you know, with the cash sales because the tons uh, or discount per ton is actually. Uh, earlier which used to be given that has actually uh, you know for some of them it was not helpful and for for, uh, for some of them the cash is quite helpful and uh, another point which is coming across is that uh, because of our change in strategy the other competitors are actually trying to give higher credit so that they can push the sales so do you think uh, that going ahead that could become a challenge for us uh, considering our uh, you know market share and uh, few of our dealers could be switching to the, that model or to our competitors hi ankit sanju gupta this side yes ankit hum jis model pe kaam kar rahe hain hamara jo 40 to 50% jo business hai jo you can say commodity wo hamara 50% ke aas paas hai jisme humko almost 1500 to 2000 rupees tak ka ekta banta hai usme aur to niche jaane ka play karne ka kisi ke paas bhi gunjaish nahi hai kyunki we we have a brand in the market we have a lower purchase cost in the market and we are lower production cost in our uh, company we are working similarly like humne jis tarah ka ye we create a apollo metallex lakshmi and the tricot with the high value rate product now we are slowly and slowly ch- changing uh, apl also with the uh, high value high value added products so we are very hopeful in the uh, coming year uh, months and years we we improve our margin by adding the value added products so and we, we can increase our margins and well as volume badhane mein bhi humko usse kafi helpful hoga the basic market hai usme boss already kuch nahi hai niche jaane ko sure sir but one question which was coming out or a few of the dealers were saying that because of this change in policy earlier you used to sign a, a, a you know a mou with most of the dealers and you used to give them some targets and some uh, incentives also for completing yeah. those targets sure yeah. yeah and now that strategy has been changed okay yeah. now you are uh, offering upfront cash discount if you are able if the dealer is procuring goods from you okay yes. okay and if the payment is uh, done in advance okay yes. now there are few other dealers also who are not happy with this particular cycle because yes. uh, their cash flow is getting impacted and yes. some of them are suggesting that if this way the situation continues then they might have to switch to some other competitors so i'm oh, not okay. sure that uh, that these yeah, particular yeah. dealers are either very small for us uh, mm-hmm. or probably uh, they were not contributing too much to our uh, volume growth as such so that was so, my question yeah ankit isme what we are doing ki kuch hamare 25 to 30% dealer aise hain jinko is policy mein problem aa raha hai but we are very friendly to our dealers 
हम उनको बैंकिंग के थ्रू चैनल फाइनेंसिंग के थ्रू उनको हम ये सारा पैसा अरेंजमेंट करा रहे हैं कि दे दे कैन टेक द डिस्काउंट्स फ्रॉम द कंपनी और उनको कंफर्ट रहे बैंक आर ऑन आवर गुडविल विदाउट आवर रिकोर्स दे आर गिविंग टू डीलर्स को वो क्रेडिट दे रहे हैं श्योर श्योर ओके ओके चल हमारा टारगेट हम किसी भी एक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नेटवर्क को हम नहीं छोड़ेंगे वाट एवर वी आर मैनेजिंग और वी आर ए वेरी रॉन्ग रिलेशनशिप विथ आवर डीलर नेटवर्क वी आर वेरी होपफुल कि हमारा मैं परसेंटेज भी नहीं आई कैन से कि एक भी डीलर हमसे बाहर नहीं जाएगा क्योंकि वी आर ए ब्रांड वी आर ए गुड बास्केट ऑफ वराइटी इन आवर पॉकेट्स एंड वी आर आवर पीपल्स आर वेरी फैमिलियर एंड फ्रेंडली विथ आवर डीलर नेटवर्क तो आई डोंट थिंक देर इज एनी प्रॉब्लम फाइनेंशियल कुछ प्रॉब्लम उनको है हमारा फाइनेंस डिपार्टमेंट बहुत तेजी से उस पर काम कर रहा है उनको चैनल फाइनेंसिंग कराने का थैंक यू थैंक यू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम अंबर सिंगानिया फ्रॉम एशियन मार्केट सिक्योरिटीज प्लीज गो हेड हेलो हेलो कैन यू हियर मी सर यस या या गो हेड uh hi sir thanks for taking my question uh just a couple of clarification i wanted to understand the math uh, when we say that industry is down by around 25% uh, during the covid time and uh, we have gained our market share uh, but when i compare the volumes our volumes have uh, de grown by around 47% on a like to like basis uh, x of tri code uh, so just wanted to understand sir uh, uh, how do we uh, understand this is the industry uh, growth uh, de growth is much higher than this number or uh, that 25 number how, how should we read it that is my first question first thing is that we had operated only 45 days out of the in the first quarter so mm-hmm. the operation started gradually one plant at a time and as per government guidelines so the first plant that that we could start was in raipur on 24th of april also but gradually the operations expanded and so the volumes is the, the volume that you see is only of a 45 days working that is half of the quarter so in half of the quarter we could have 55 we achieved 55% of our normal sales so that explains that first question that uh, how how if i have uh, achieved 55% in 50% of the time that means i have achieved more market share there is no okay. any doubt and there is no doubt that in any industry that uh, the demand has shrunk due to lockdown even today everything is uh, has not opened up so um, so amber arun ji's point is that that when we say that market is at 80 dollars versus 100 dollars this is 40 mm-hmm. 45 days of operations excluding okay. the lockdown period okay got it got it is and market is declined by 25% right yeah uh, after it started operating okay and uh, secondly just wanted to understand uh, uh, during this uh, uh, quarter we had seen the fluctuations in the raw material prices on the downside as such so if you can just uh, give a rough cut uh, number how much uh, we might have incurred on the uh, inventory side because generally if i calculate uh, we we keep around 2 lakh ton of inventory and uh, even if 2000 rupees of per ton of decline we we factor in this quarter then it works out to be around 40 crore odd kind of uh, no, number no, 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 am i correct no. on the math no amber this is totally incorrect math uh, see um, i mean if you look at our working capital improvement it is at the capital mm-hmm. level it is also at the inventory level right so the number which you said the inventory level which we were operating at today they are much lower right and when i am producing uh, uh, in a month in a particular month if i am producing more than uh, what inventory i am keeping in my system i can never have uh, a major inventory write down or uh, or uh, or gains right so we are working on this model that's why we have always been highlighting that we are making our company shock proof we keep lower inventory we produce more steel price go up down it doesn't impact us we work on our uh, manufacturing uh, ebita part but, uh, but the inventory which we were having do, uh, just before the lockdown uh, so were we able to pass on those uh, 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 thing how how we accounted for that because there must have been some uh, losses so we might have incurred so what happened was that uh, we had started sales from 22nd 23rd april right india the mm-hmm. the uh, the steel market was still not operational till uh, first week of may so we had that 10 15 days window where we cleared our high price inventory high price mm-hmm. 
right? So, uh, so all the high price inventory we could offload uh, through sale. And when steel prices started adjusting to the market price, uh, our our inventory uh, cost was also low. The new inventory acquisition cost was low. So, so, so if you look at uh, full 90 days, there was hardly any inventory gain or loss uh, because today our system is operating at uh, such an efficient model where the inventory in the system which is lying, our monthly sales are higher than that number. Okay. And uh, just lastly, on the tricot side, uh, I understand it is difficult to uh, gauge the demand at this juncture because of COVID and all. But as, at a company level, how are we planning to roll out tricot in a much wider platform? Because it's been just a four quarter we have started. So, uh, what are our thoughts and plans for uh, taking tricot on a pan India level, much more deeper penetration? And uh, what are our targets uh, on that account in over two to five year uh, period? I think? So, so if you look at Tricode, see, there are four or five products uh, on which we have worked on, right? So there are two products which are particularly um, going well in the south market, and there are two products which are going well in the north market, right? Uh, so Signature and Elegant are mainly in the north market, and north. south, sorry, and uh, Plank and Board Frame are in the north market. So, uh, so we, so Tricot has 250,000 ton capacity today, uh, right? And uh, in the in the December quarter, we already did around uh, 48,000 ton um, um, as as uh, the quarterly sales. So, if you analyze it, we already achieved 80% of our capacity utilization. There could be marginal improvement, uh, marginal increase in capacity over the next few quarters. Um, so I think on the current model, some products for north and some product for south, uh, we should be uh, we should be doing okay with Tricode. There is no need per se to take it uh, pan India level or to be uh, or to be uh, highly highly aggressive. Uh, we have a strong business plan for the next two years, where uh, from the current existing network, uh, today we have 80 distributors. We will achieve uh, uh, these uh, 300,000 ton kind of uh, capacity utilization number uh, over the next few quarters. Okay. Okay. I have one more question, if I can, if I may ask. Uh, uh, so one thing on the on the uh, our largest uh, customer, Shankara, I just wanted to get some colors. What kind of decline we have, or what kind of uptake we have seen in this quarter versus last quarter, and what is the outlook on that account? How we are planning to bridge that uh, uh, gap uh, because they are the, one of the largest customers for us? No, but I don't think that is the right platform to talk about it. Uh, uh, we'll skip this question. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh Patwal from HDFC. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, thanks, Anubhav, for taking my question again. Uh, it's very hard thing, actually, the export number. It's a follow-up question from the previous question. As you mentioned, that almost 90% uh, uh, of current quarters, um, uh, the income is from uh, export incentives. So last annual report, which I have hand off, it, it, it highlighted that we had a, uh, 8 crores of uh, uh, export incentive in FI19. So, what would be that number in FY20 and in this quarter exports? It was right. very heartening actually if we have been, yeah. So, when I told you 90%, that was in FY20, that was related to FY20 number. Again, yeah, so what would be the export number in FY20 and uh, previous quarter also? So, we, uh, Deepak ji, uh, yeah, it's a amount of government grant on the concessional interest on uh, EPC export packing credit. So it's a 3% subvention is there. So that amount is there. So, so sort of our other income last year, FI20 was uh, 21 crores. Out of that, yeah. 18, 19 crore was uh, export incentive. Which is largely the uh, interest subvention on yes. exports. And well, how much was, was the actual ex ex export number just in uh, just for the bookkeeping part? This is not the target present interest submission. There is a government is giving us 3.05 percent or 3.60 percent of incentive of uh, MIS and 2 percent of focus, okay. focus product. So total, I think 5 percent is a, we, we are getting from government also on the sales. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that is on the which numbers are they just export numbers just for the bookkeeping part? FI20 and the uh, current quarter, if you, if you have that handy. So uh, normally it's been around 5% of our overall sales. 
ஃபைட் பண்ணிட்டு ஓகே ஓகே சரி தேங்க்ஸ் அலோ தேங்க்யூ The next question is from Kedar B from Composite Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, my first question is regarding the advertising and the brand building initiatives that the company had started last year. Now, in light of the accelerated market share gains that we have seen post-COVID, so is there any updates to that policy or are we continuing with what we had planned last year? so um, so if you see the market share gain uh, um, of course post covid level you see it's we can gain but you need to also uh, understand that even last year fy20 our volume growth was 24% right when industry had not grown at the same pace so so the advertisement uh, campaign which we started uh, in february 2019 it started playing out for the full 12 months right uh where we increase our market share from 36% to 40% by end of financial year and then yes um, in last 3 uh, 4 months uh, because of lockdown it has accelerated so um, so last year our branding expenses were around 50 crores this year uh, q1 was uh, very very minimal um, okay and uh, now that sales are coming back to normalized levels we are we are uh, we are drawing the strategy how do we See next nine months uh, to spend on the advertisement, but as uh, the sales have normalized, uh, we will definitely um, go uh, on the advertisement, but not as aggressive as we were in FY20. Okay, okay, fair enough. So coming to my second question, so given the the kind of efficiencies that we've been able to get out in terms of optimizing working capital. and hopefully if the current trend continues over the next 12 to 18 months there may be a day where the company actually becomes debt free in that case are we starting to think about what the capital allocation policy would be going forward so do we plan on increasing the dividend payout or do we have let's say plans for doing some inorganic expansion any any thoughts on that front so i think the first target is to become zero debt uh, whenever that happens uh, and then we will discuss uh, with our board with our shareholders that um, how can we utilize uh, uh, the capital but but first target is to become debt free okay and uh, there there appears to be a possibility that we could do it within the next 12 months correct barring any unforeseen circumstances yeah okay thank you that's it from my side thank you the next question is from the line of Avilash Achatale from Dalal and Brocha, please go ahead. Yeah, so thank you for taking my question. Uh, so you mentioned that the market is down 20-25 percent in Q1. So I just want to uh, take a uh, view like how it has improved uh, on in Q2. Like how are you seeing uh, current circumstances overall? You know the how the volumes are uh, in the current circumstances as compared to pre-COVID level. Uh, yeah so so july uh, we could start on a very strong note right we had a very strong momentum uh, uh, from june end and we could sustain that momentum in month of july um, um see there are three four things which uh, we are targeting number one is uh, like i mentioned the rural sales right the rural versus urban split for us before covid was 40% rural 60% urban today 60% is rural and 40% urban right so uh, so uh, we had uh, i would say we had sense that the rural sales will outperform uh, urban um, um, uh, in india for the first 6 9 months of this financial year so we uh, so we went uh, aggressive on our rural distribution network number 2 number 2 was the um, market share gain from the unorganized sector okay uh, there are a lot of uh, small players um, in the, in the industry who were struggling uh, with the supply chain constraints who were struggling because of uh, the because of the cash crunch uh, liquidity crunch in the system so um, so we knew that uh, there is weak uh, we targeted the weak competitors and we attacked uh, that market aggressively and we gained market share there number 3 is that um, the structural steel tubing if you see it it is providing solutions uh, cheaper compared to the conventional products so um, just to give an example 
uh, a PV building, a pre-engineered building uh, structure, which is built on uh, on conventional steel products, which are H-beam, I-beam, and angles and channels. If you converted it to a tubular building, okay, building which is 60% made out of uh, APL Apollo tubes, high diameter, high thickness tubes, the weight of the building comes down by 30 to 40%, which results in the project cost saving by up to 10 to 20%. So this trend is also emerging in the time when contractors, developers, everyone is trying to save costs. So it has become very easy for us to promote the idea of uh, tubular uh, construction in India, which anyways we were trying to uh, do uh, before COVID. So it has helped us to market uh, this product um, aggressively and we are already seeing the benefit. So these three factors uh, helped us uh, gain market share and uh, and uh, perform much better in month of July compared to compared to any any competitor or the industry. Okay, but uh, do you see like you know industry is also emerging uh, faster than expected in uh, post COVID in, uh, from Q2 as unlocking happens? I would say so. If you, uh, I mean, that data is also um, uh, uh, available. If you talk to players like Larsen and Tubro, Shafurji and Palanji, some real estate companies like Oproy Realty, etc. So, uh, so I mean, uh, they do talk about that almost 80-90% of their sites are now operational, um, right? Uh, uh, large developers like DLF, most of its sites in Gurgaon are operational now. So, I think industry is uh, in, industry is also coming back to normalized levels. Uh, but still, I would say it will be down by 10 to 20 percent compared to pre-COVID levels. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from ICSA Potential Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. My first question is basically with respect to demand or uh, bifurcation in terms of which product categories we are seeing most demand in whether recovery is the strongest. And uh, secondly, in terms of the players, so which are uh, the smaller players that we are saying we gain market share from, uh, are we looking at acquisitions at any of those front? That's the first question. So so first thing, Rahul, if you see our, our product portfolio, there are three categories which have performed well for us in last uh, three months. Number one is Apollo Structural. Which is uh, 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 which is hollow section uh, tubes, um, right? Number two is Apollo Z, which is galvanized uh, tubes uh, for coastal markets. Number three is Tricode series. So, so these are the three products which form almost 80% of our volume. Um, so, uh, um, so we have uh, seen demand revival across these three product categories. 45% um, of our sales come from residential um, construction, whether it is urban or or rural. Then 20% comes from the commercial, which is mainly urban um, and uh, or or semi-urban. Uh, third uh, is infrastructure, uh, which uh, which uh, obviously in, we we saw some revival in month of July. Uh, June was uh, not good for infrastructure, but July we saw some uptake in the infrastructure projects. Uh, we uh, we saw some inquiries coming in, so so I think uh, and 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 all the three categories Rahul, whether it is Apollo structural or Apollo Z or Apollo tricot, so they cater to all these three segments uh, in some way or the other. So it's a mix of uh, you know revival in residential, in commercial, in infrastructure, and in all these three products which are positioned uh, in their own manner, they uh, they benefit uh, out of that. Okay, and in terms of the smaller players. Uh, they were they were stronger in the tier two tier three setups or metros. Metros. Okay. So given that metros had not uh, bounced back that much, once the metros start bouncing back, could we start to see a little lower growth than the industry going forward? Uh, you mean uh, for APL Apollo? Yes, yes, yes. I don't think so, uh, Rahul, because uh, right now our rural network has become very strong, number one. Number two, urban also, if you see, um, right, uh, um, I mean, in month of July, we have seen all the major metro cities which got opened up, barring, say, Mumbai or Ahmedabad, uh, but even they started opening up in, uh, uh, in late part of July. So uh, obviously we can't disclose numbers uh, uh, for month of July, but whatever we could achieve in month of July, uh, it doesn't say so. 
Okay. And what about touch points? Uh, how has that uh, increased for us last two, three months? So touch points, uh, I mean, uh, we have a network of 800 distributors who cater to 40,000 retailers um, in India, okay? Um, before COVID, I would say 400, 500 were very active uh, distributors for us. Today, that number has gone up by 100, 150. Okay, okay. So I just, I'll just go back to my previous question and tell you the context in which I was asking that. So we have been a, a major gainer for the unorganized to organized transition, and we have gained market share in a significant manner. What I'm saying is the unorganized in this industry was more prevalent in metros. So once right. metros start to bounce back, uh, which is expected in the coming months, I was just trying to wonder whether this market share gain could be extended much, much more in the coming months, is what I was trying to understand from you. Rahul, Sanjay Gupta this yes. side. Yes, sir. First, what has been our biggest advantage? What has happened? That when a small player like Pune or Bangalore sells, first he gives to delivery to dealer in their warehouse. Okay. Right. Now, what has happened? If he gives to delivery to dealer in their warehouse, first he gives to delivery to dealer in their warehouse. Okay. Right. Now, what has happened? If he gives to delivery to dealer in their warehouse, first he gives to delivery to dealer in their warehouse. Okay. Right. Now, what has happened? If he gives to delivery to dealer in their warehouse, first he gives to delivery to dealer so again, he giving a loading and loading charges and the trade cost on this. We have our distribution and supply chain system so much that we are reaching our plants directly to Kolapur. So, there is no margin in all this business that it will cost the industry or computer to share it. I am very, very hopeful that I am going to go on this supply chain model. ये आगे में भी और भी हमारा मार्केट सेफ बढ़ा सकता है, but अभी कुछ भी कहना थोड़ा सा जल्दबाजी होगा, क्योंकि अभी आफ्टर कोविड हमने पूरा गेम, पूरा जो 20 साल से जिस स्ट्रक्चर पर हम काम करते हैं, हमने पूरा स्ट्रक्चर उठाकर चेंज कर दिया है, तो कुछ भी कहना जल्दबाजी होगा, but I'm very hopeful कि जो नया Perfect, sir. Perfect. That's what I wanted to hear. Perfect. Sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Jain from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Sir, just one question with respect to the margins uh, or the product wise margin disclosure that you guys have given. Uh, in that DFT, the Apollo structural DFT, which is our hollow section, uh, you know that the margins have have significantly dropped in the last third quarter. So I mean, even you know, we see Q on Q, uh, margins have significantly dropped. So is it because that we have passed on some discount to distributors to improve our volumes, or what's been the case? And that's you know, even in I think uh, normal hollow section and uh, black pipes also that's been the case. No, Dhruv, so I think benchmark for uh, Q4, okay, um, um, if you, the March quarter you're talking about. No, no, it's talking about Q3. So, so yeah, so see, December quarter, uh, if you see Q3 FI20, that was our, that our um, best quarter, okay. Now Q4, March quarter. Bro, bro, see, what I'm trying to say is that the product-wise EBITDA spreads, okay, whether for June quarter or for March quarter, please, please don't take these as benchmarks because March quarter had the full 15 days of revenue loss, okay? So because of high fixed costs, the margin across the product categories was low. And again, uh, uh, Q1, June quarter, the, the uh, the fixed cost was quite high compared to the revenue loss. So, yeah, so, so don't so if, if, I, if I yeah no so if I use that benchmark then I think we have improved our margins in GP despite having some sort of uh, I mean about a 36 percent volume loss in this quarter. So I mean how do I look at this? 
बिकॉज बिकॉज फॉर अवर अपोलो जी जी पी कैटेगरी इन इन आफ्टर लॉकडाउन इन होल ऑफ कोस्टल रीजन इट वॉज मेनली ए पी एल अपोलो विच वॉज डॉमिनेंट टू सप्लाई दी प्रोडक्ट सो वी कोड वी कोड वी कोड चार्ज द प्रीमियम इन द मार्केट बिकॉज देर वॉज वेरी लिमिटेड सप्लाई फ्रॉम द कॉम्पिटिटर्स ओके and and uh, considering that you know uh, july has been healthy as you highlighted uh, how do you see you know your capex going forward considering that uh, we will i mean considering that subsequent quarter should be hopefully better than the first quarter so uh, how do you see capex and possibly your uh, advertisement costs going forward in this year dhruv regarding the capex this year we have no major capex plan we are just adjusting our facilities this year like we have a two uh, we acquire a company in hyderabad sankara we have there two g uh, galvanizing line we have two galvanizing line there but wahan se uska jo bhi market tha the freight cost is very high now we are shifting from uh, hyderabad to one line to uh, bombay and one line to raipur plant लाइक दिस टाइप ऑफ जब हम एक लाइक टू डे माई कैप्सिटी इज ऑलमोस्ट टू पॉइंट फाइव मिलियन टन टू पॉइंट वन टू पॉइंट टू मिलियन टन इन एपीएल ग्रुप एंड थ्री में थ्री लैक टन ऑलमोस्ट इन ट्राईकोर्ट तो इस सब को काम करते हुए जिस समय जो अच्छा लगा हमने काम किया तो बहुत सारी गलतियां हो जाती हैं कहीं पर कोई मशीन मार्केट कहीं थी मशीन कहीं लग गई कहीं से कोई फ्रेड कॉस्ट देना पड़ा था हमको तो अभी हमने जस्ट अपने कॉस्ट को कंट्रोल करने के लिए हम इस साल में सिर्फ अपनी मशीनों को रीअलाइनमेंट कर रहे हैं एक जगह से उखाड़ के जो जिसकी मार्केट के नजदीक सब मशीनों को एक दूसरी जगह भेज रहे हैं इस साल का हमारा मेजर फोकस वो है कि हम इस साल में अपनी सारी मशीन को हम रीअलाइनमेंट कर लें उसके बाद वी हैव ए बिग प्लॉट इन रायपुर ऑलमोस्ट वी एव पार्ट थ्री हंड्रेड एकर लैंड लास्ट ईयर वी आर नो फोकस कि हमको कोई भी अब नॉन वैल्यू रेट प्रोडक्ट का काम नहीं करना है वी आर लाइक एक मिल पर पहले ही काफी एडवांस पे जा चुके थे 500 हंड्रेड स्क्वायर जो ये कॉलम इन पाइप के लिए काफी मैंने ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड ये फेमस है इंडिया में देर इज नो फैसिलिटीज तो उसमें हमने एडवांस भी दे रखा था सबसे पहले तो हम उस प्रोजेक्ट को पूरा करेंगे जैसे ही हम थोड़ा सा और एक दो क्वार्टर देखते अपने आप को सबसे ले लें और थोड़ा बैंक में हमारा फ्री कैश फ्लो हो जाए क्योंकि द कंपनी इज डिसाइडेड कि वी आर नॉट गोइंग इन द फ्यूचर वी आर नॉट गोइंग ऑन तो डेट बेसिस हमने डेट लेके कोई भी मशीन नहीं लगाना है ये हम बहुत क्लियर है अपने लिए मैं जो हमने कोविड के टाइम में एक दो महीना देखा है हमने डेट पर काम नहीं करना है तो जैसे ही हमारा था बैंक बैलेंस शीट और अच्छी और इंप्रूव हो जाएगी इधर हमारी फुल कैपेसिटी हम टू पॉइंट मिलियन टन पर पूरा पहुंच जाएंगे तो वी एव रायपुर वाला जो हमारा नया प्लॉट है उस पर फिर हम धीरे धीरे स्लोली स्लोली कैपेक्स पर आएंगे बट अभी इस टू अर्ली अभी तो हम इस साल में तो सिर्फ अपनी कॉस्ट को कंट्रोल करने के लिए हम मशीन को री एडजस्टमेंट कर रहे हैं लाइक अभी हम हैदराबाद से पूना माल भेज रहे थे वी हैव गिविंग सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड रुपीज कॉस्ट एंड मुंबई में मेरा फाइव हंड्रेड रॉ मेटेरियल सस्ता है तो टोटल इज ट्वेंटी वन हंड्रेड कॉस्ट अब मेरा मुंबई प्लांट से पूना एट हंड्रेड में माल पहुंच जाता है तो आई मैंने उस प्लांट को वहां से उखाड़ के मुंबई में शिफ्ट कर दिया तो माई मार्जिन इंप्रूव बाई टू परसेंट थर्टीन हंड्रेड से मेरा मार्जिन बढ़ जाएगा इस तरह के हमारे सिस्टम में बहुत सारे लीकेजेस थे मेरा इस टाइम जो हायर कॉस्ट है सबसे बड़ा कॉस्ट है ऑल द वे वी आई ऑल द लोकेशन मैं हूँ उसके बाद भी मेरा फ्रेड कॉस्ट जो आउटवर्ड फ्रेड कॉस्ट है ऑलमोस्ट ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड रुपीज के आसपास है मेरा टारगेट उसको ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड से एट हंड्रेड पर लाने का है हमने इंटरेस्ट कॉस्ट पर काम कर लिया हमने विजिस कॉस्ट पर काम कर लिया हमने स्टोर पर काम कर लिया हमने पावर पर बहुत काम कर लिया अब मैं फ्रेड कॉस्ट के ऊपर और काम कर रहा हूँ कि थ्री फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज अपना फ्रेड और कैसे कम करूं जो ड्यू टू क्रॉस लोकेशन सेल्स पे हमको लगता था तो उसमें इस साल में हमारा सारा फोकस उस चीज पर पूरा डिपेंड कर रहा है कि हम उस पर काम करके थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन तक हम कंपनी को एट हंड्रेड रुपीज फ्रेड तक ले आए जैसे जैसे हमारा खर्चा कम होता जाएगा वैल्यू एडिशन हमारे पास होगा वॉल्यूम हमारे पास है तो हमारे लिए आगे के रास्ते बहुत आसान हो जाएंगे सर दिस वॉज वेरी हेल्पफुल सर जस्ट वन कनेक्टिंग क्वेश्चन टू जो आपने कहा अभी तो सर ये 500 हंड्रेड बाई फाइव हंड्रेड में सर केपेक्स कितना होगा और ये कब तक मतलब आप प्लान कर रहे हो मतलब कितने टाइम में हंड्रेड करोड़ का कैपेक्स है उस मिल पे हमारा 20 परसेंट के आसपास एडवांस गया हुआ प्री कोविड पहले ही चला गया था 
हमने थोड़ा सा उसको पोस्टपोन कर रखा ढीला कर रखा है तो उसमें हमारा टोटल कैपेक्स जो है हंड्रेड करोड़ के आसपास का है और सर ये मतलब ये और कैसे हम इसके बारे में सोच रहे हैं कंसिडरिंग हम, हमने तो बी एफ आई थी लास्ट दो तीन साल पहले ही लॉन्च हुआ था सो so, हम इसके बारे में मार्केट सर ये मार्केट के बारे में कैसे सोच रहे हैं कितनी बड़ी मार्केट हो सकती है आपके लिए बस आज हमारी सबसे बड़ी जीत है डीएफटी में देखो दो बेनिफिट है मैं हमेशा बोलता आया हूँ एक बेनिफिट है जो हम उसमें हाई डायमेटल पाइप्स बनाते हैं उसमें हमको वैल्यू एडिशन बहुत मिलता है बट लो लो डायमीटर जो उसमें हम पाइप बनाते हैं डीएफटी में उसमें हमको वैल्यू एडिशन तो उतना नहीं मिलता बट आज जो मैं रूरल एरिया में जाकर मार्केट डायरेक्ट कैप्चर कर रहा हूँ ड्यू टू माई प्रोडक्ट रेंज मैं एक एक दिन पे एक एक मिल में पांच पांच रोलिंग छह छह रोलिंग लगा के मेटेरियल बना के सर्विस दे पा रहा हूँ मेरा कंप्यूटर को वही रोलिंग आठ आठ दिन एक रोलिंग करनी पड़ती है पांच पांच दिन एक रोलिंग करनी पड़ती है फिर वो बड़े डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर को माल देता है बड़े डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर अपने घर में पहले सारे माल मंगवाता है स्टॉक करता है फिर उसके बाद वो आगे डिस्पैच करता है जो उनका साइकिल पंद्रह दिन का था मैं उस साइकिल को दो दिन पहले आया हूँ क्योंकि मेरे पास सुबह ऑर्डर आता है दोपहर में मैं माल बना के सप्लाई कर देता हूँ आज हमारा टर्न आउट टाइम जो है हमने चौबीस घंटे के अंदर में हमने करना शुरू कर दिया है ये चीज हमने जिस तरह एयरलाइंस में देखा है एयरलाइंस में क्या गेम चेंजर हुआ पहले फ्लाइट आती थी उसके बाद तीन घंटे तक वापस जाती थी इंडोवर ने उस लाइन को चेंज किया आप जब प्लेन में बैठे हुए हो तो पहले ही वो थैला लेकर घूमते थे कि आपका जो भी कूड़ा करके तो उसमें डाल दो तो उसी फॉर्मूले को बेस बनाते हुए लाइक अब पेंट इंडस्ट्री में देखो चेंज आया कि एक गोली डालने आपको इतना सारा बेस पेंट रखने की अलग अलग कलर के पेंट रखने की जरूरत नहीं एक बेस पेंट आपने डाला उसी से सारे कलर के पेंट बन गए तो डीपट इज लाइक दैट इसके बहुत सारे बेनिफिट्स तो विजुअल है जो आपको सीधा डायरेक्टली आपके पॉकेट में आ रहे हैं बहुत सारे बेनिफिट्स ऐसे हैं लाइक like ब्रांडिंग जो आपके पॉकेट में डायरेक्टली नहीं आ रहे बट पूरे सिस्टम को इंप्रूव करने में वो आपको हेल्प कर रहे हैं उसी के उसी के कारण हमने इन्वेंट्री अपना इतने लोएस्ट पर लिया है और विथ फुल वराइटी सर्विस क्योंकि हमारा चेंज ओवर टाइम एकदम नहीं है इंजीनियर one square foot of uh, construction whether it's a warehouse or factory shed or any infrastructure project one square foot of construction will require 1.2 kg of uh, 1.2 kg of uh, apl apollo high diameter tubes so so you can imagine the kind of uh, the million square footage of uh, warehousing construction or or industrial shed construction we think it can be a 200 300000 ton uh, uh, annual market size for high diameter tubes to, to 200 to 300000 tons and we are putting up capacity for uh, how much so uh, so we have uh, capacity to cater to this demand after we get 500 by 500 square okay cool thanks thank you before we take the next question a reminder to participants that you may press star and 1 to join the question queue The next question is from Madhav Madhav from Fidelity. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Good evening. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Uh, my my question was, um, uh, I think first question was on the margin side. Uh, so you know, uh, I think uh, Sanjay sir mentioned that uh, we can bring down the freight cost to 800 rupees per ton. I think which is about 1200 rupees per ton right now. Uh, so that basically can happen. On our entire volume by the end of the year, or is it for some part of the volume? Uh, yeah, yeah, on the entire on on the entire volume. Okay. Uh, so that's a very big reduction. That one third of our freight cost going down, right? That's uh, yes, boss. So so uh, so I am very unhappy with me. कि आज तक हम कर क्या रहे थे हम ये जो हमने एक दो महीना stop किया अपने आप को तो इससे हमको बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिला है. हम बहुत सारी गलतियां कर रहे थे जिसको हम सुधार रहे हैं। ओके ओके 
अच्छा दूसरी चीज थी कि आपने कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल पे एक डेढ़ महीने पहले बोला था कि यू नो फोर फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज पर टन बिडा पर टन तक वी कैन यू नो टारगेटिंग सो बेसिकली फोर हंड्रेड कैन कम फ्रॉम फ्रेट एंड द बैलेंस रिकॉर्ड द अदर एलिमेंट्स लाइक ब्रांडिंग एंड Freight, cost, value addition, branding—all the four things. Uh, my target is not four thousand. My target is reaching five thousand. Okay, so that's very uh, good to hear. Um, I, uh, all right, so yeah, I think that's uh, other questions are there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one. The next question is from Deepak Mehta, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, good evening, sir. Thank you for taking my question. My question is already asked, so I will ask some questions. So, uh, the, uh, in talk about the innovation and you know new products. So, what can be the future uh, this products in next three to five years? What we can expect? बस न्यू प्रोडक्ट्स में भी थोड़ा सा हमारा डेवलपमेंट रुका पड़ा है क्योंकि अवर मार्केटिंग पीपल आर नॉट ट्रैवलिंग अभी हमारे यहाँ ट्रैवल अलाउ नहीं किया हमने अब विदाउट ट्रैवलिंग एंड विदाउट डूइंग द फैब्रिकेटर मीट्स एंड द लॉट ऑफ द ग्राउंड वर्क ये न्यू प्रोडक्ट्स को थोड़ा सा डेवलप करना इस टाइम बहुत टफ है तो इस टाइम थोड़ा सा हम स्लो चल रहे हैं न्यू प्रोडक्ट के ऊपर अच्छा सर अच्छा तो ठीक है सर और ये पूछना की अभी हमें कोई गवर्नमेंट से भी प्रोजेक्ट या कॉन्टेक्ट मिलता है की प्रोजेक्ट कम्स फ्रॉम रेजिडेंशियल और विद कॉर्पोरेट गवर्नमेंट से जैसे कुछ प्रोजेक्ट सब प्रोजेक्ट तो बहुत सारे हमको मिलते हैं बट जहाँ पर ये टेंडर बेसिस सिस्टम होता है वहाँ पर हम पार्टिसिपेट नहीं करते हैं क्योंकि वहाँ पर फिर कंपनी कंपनी की सर्विस का कोई बेनिफिट नहीं मिलता है कोई भी दूसरा सस्ता प्लेयर वहाँ पर माल देता है हम नहीं देते हैं ओके ओके ठीक है सर बेस्ट ऑफ लक एंड थैंक यू वन सेकेंड सर Thank you very much. That was the last question in queue. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. Thanks everyone uh, for uh, for your time. Uh, we look forward to see you again uh, during the second quarter conference call. Thanks and have a nice day. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of ICICI Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us ladies and gentlemen you may now disconnect your lines